Hi guys, welcome to Bloom in Rising TV. I'm Jim Knight. I'm going to be the Leicester City fan for the Oppo preview of the uh, the game at the King Power Stadium on Saturday. First of all, the guys have asked me to talk about the Nigel Pearson situation, which I'm sure you've all seen. Um, it's been a, a lot of the back page of the papers recently. There was a, a spat with a Leicester City fan. I use the word fan very, very lightly. He was giving him plenty of abuse in the stand uh, at the Liverpool defeat 3-1 uh, last Tuesday. I'm completely behind Pearson, to be honest. I don't condone what he did. I think he's kind of, you know, it's a natural boil over reaction when you've got someone giving you abuse like that. Yes, he should be thicker skinned and he should rise above it and he should have apologised, I think. But that's very Pearson. He doesn't kind of go out of his way to pander to people's needs. He doesn't particularly, he isn't particularly media trained and media savvy in the way that a lot of managers are now, where they just trot out the kind of the same answers over and over again. 10 games without a win now. We haven't won a game since we beat Manchester United 5-3 at home at the end of September, which is absolutely massive for any manager, let alone one in the Premier League, you know, with a newly promoted club where the expectations are high. Um, we have got money to spend in January. I hope that he gets the opportunity to spend it and it isn't someone like Tony Pulis that comes in. Um, obviously, whoever's the Leicester manager gets my support, but I would prefer it to be Pearson. Um, I really hope that we don't get battered, but it is a distinct possibility because of the fact that City are in such good form. Yes, they can throw in the odd stinker, but I think you know the, the game against Sunderland a couple of weeks ago shows exactly what they're going to try and do at the King Power, to be honest. They'll try and overpower us, overrun us in midfield um, with the, the extra quality that they've got, and there's every chance that they're going to do it. Um, the problem, the, the main issue that I foresee for that game is the fact that we're missing Paul Koncheski, who's obviously quite an experienced left-back which probably means Jeffrey Slup's going to fill in um, in that slot. Now, Slup isn't really a defender in any shape of the word. He's a, a kind of um, moulded um, attacking midfielder that's that's been quite versatile in our squad. Um, he started playing left-back a couple of seasons ago, uh, the year we we lost to Watford in the, the playoff um, semi-final. He was playing a few games at left-back then, and he filled in a bit last season there. Um, he's quick, he's strong, so he has a lot of good attributes, and he, he reads the game quite well um, as a left-back, but he isn't a natural defender, which you know I think could be exposed at the top level, and that's what worries me more about the fact that he's going to be facing Pablo Zabaleta and... Jesus Navas, who are two of the best, you know, wide right players in the in the Premier League, um, I think that's where Pellegrini will be targeting is the majority of his attacks down that side because of the fact that um, it's likely to be someone like uh, well, it's almost certainly going to be Schlupp at left back, and then someone like Albright and probably in front of him who hasn't played a lot of minutes for us this year uh, and could have a big kind of problem. Uh, on his hands with the overlap that those two guys, Zabletta and, and Navas, are going to have. Um, City's best player for me is Yaya Torre with Sergio Aguero out. Obviously, that would be the answer for me if he was fit, but he's not going to be. So, Torre, yes, although he has had issues this year with kind of when he phones in a performance and kind of just trots around for, for 90 minutes. But on his day, he's, he's a, you know, a match winner, um, one of the best attacking midfielders in the Premier League and one that we will probably struggle to deal with. Uh, my score prediction for this one, uh, I'm going to go 3-1 City, uh, not to be over pessimistic, but I think that's a kind of realistic uh, expectation of what the Leicester fans are looking at. I don't think we're expecting to get anything out of the, the game. I think we just want to see a positive performance and one that's kind of improved upon uh, the recent defeats um, to the likes of QPR, uh, West Brom, Aston Villa, who teams that really we should be targeting beating uh, home or away if we want to stay in this division. So hopefully we're just looking for an improved performance, to be honest. Um, that's it for me, really. Uh, I'm Jim Knight. I'm on Twitter at Jim Knight 88 You can find me in various places writing about football and betting. Uh, Wheelofbetting.co.uk. I'm the chief betting editor for Goal.com as well, so find all my ramblings on there. Um, I also do uh, podcasting for the EPL Index. Um, so if you want to see more from me or hear more from me, then uh, check out that. If not, then uh, thanks very much, guys, for having me. And fingers crossed uh, for a decent result with the King Power on Saturday. <laughs>